Hi everybody, Miss Julia here. So today's video is going to be on how faces and um, we're going to do an abstract portrait. Something a little out of the out of the regular box that you would normally do it in and the colors are going to be a little strange but kind of fun um, and I'll walk you through it, the sketch of it, and then I'll walk you through the painting part of it. The painting we're going to do in watercolor if you have them but I am going to uh, use the washable markers again, just so you can see how we can turn those into the watercolor like we did on one of the other videos. So um, have some fun with it. Be creative with your colors. We are going to do a little bit of color theory on this one too. So um, you just watch the video and then you decide the colors you want to use. Okay, thanks. Have a great day. So this video is going to be a portrait. So we're going to start with the very center of the sheet and I want to make it a fairly life-size face so I'm going to take this center dot and I want to line it up to the edges of my paper and put a tick that way I know where the middle is my paper but I don't want to put a line in there what I want to do is go a finger below that and I'm going to take out the original dot get it out of our way and I'm going to draw a curved line dipping down to that dot because the head is going to be looking down in this piece so I want to show how it changes your dimensions of the measurements of the face a little differently than we did in a previous one. So now we have um, the center dot. On each side of the center dot your, your eye is approximately two fingers wide which um, is the width of a, a natural eye. So. I'm going to take the width of an eye, which is two fingers, and I'm going to put a dot on each side and take out the original dot. So then I'm going to go two fingers over here, that's one eye, two fingers over here, that's another eye, with an eye space in between. Then I'm going to take out the original line to get that out of our way, leaving the ticks so that I know where the two eyes are going to be. So when you're looking down, it doesn't change the width of your face. It changes the length of your face. So obviously when you're looking down, your whole face shortens because you're going to see more top of your head. So I'm going to draw a curved line here, curved line here. Okay, now for the eyebrow, if your eye was open, which is about a, a finger's width when you open your eye, it's about a finger's width, width to your eyebrow. So normally we'd take two fingers for a closed eye, but because the face is looking down, we're going to shorten it by only going a finger and a half. So I'm going to put a dot at my, look at the halfway point of this finger, there's a finger and a half. So this dot represents the peak of your eyebrow. So your eyebrow begins at your tear duct, even with your tear duct, and the hairs follow the direction of the face and they peek out at that dot and then they come down and leave a bit of an angle on the end. So don't make it even with the end of your eye, angle it out a little bit. So I'm going to do even with my tear duct, peeking out at the dot and angling out to the side. So make sure they're kind of symmetrical as best you can, you can there. So now for your nose, if you placed your hand right on your own face. You could feel where your brow bone is and you can see the tip of your nose is about two eye lengths, so four fingers from your brow bone. So that's where your normal nose would end. But we're gonna go about a half a finger shorter than that. So I'm gonna take my four fingers and go up about a half a finger and there's the tip of the nose. So it's a little shorter than usual. Then below this tip is where your nostrils are gonna be. The sides of your nose are the width of the eye, so two fingers wide. So then I want to go, just because we're not looking up at the person, they're looking down, you're only going to see the shape of the nostril, you're not going to see into their nose much. So I'm going to take away this little dot. Now I'm going to go two fingers to the bottom of the mouth, but because the head's looking down, we're going to go a finger and a half. So I'm going to take out this dot. So about a finger and a half from the, the nose to the bottom of the nose is where my mouth is going to end. So I'm going to maybe 
maybe about a finger's width up is where the opening of my mouth is going to be. And I'm going just a little wider than my nose. I don't want to make it too wide. I'm going to put the little dip of the top lip. That's that little muscle that makes your mouth dip. So there's your mouth. Round it out a little bit in here. Don't draw in the bottom lip. It, then it looks like those candied lips you get at the, the candy store. It, um, you know, it really it's just a hill, so we just want to create a shadow. So I'm going to just now go another, normally two fingers to the bottom, but we're going to go a finger and a half. So now the jaw is a little shorter. So for the width of the face, about one finger over is where your head ends, depending on the weight of the person, the age of the person. But we're going to go one finger over, about a finger and a half for from the mouth, about a finger and a half from the mouth. So we're just going to come down and give a soft jawline. So this picture is kind of a realistic picture at this point, but we're going to make it abstract in the way that we color it. And then we're going to go kind of outside the box. So we're going to do a little bit of color theory on this. So you, what you want to do is you want to pick color opposites. So the color opposite to purple is yellow. So I'm going to start with yellow. Now you could choose uh, if you were, say you're doing, say you wanted a color palette of uh, like a pink, pinks and purples, the color opposite to that would be lime green because the color opposite to red is green. So the color opposite to pink would be lime green. So I'm just going down where highlight would hit this face. So more down the center where the height of your face is. So think of a, a curve. Your face is curved. So your your eye um, eyelids would be catching light a little more than under the eye. The tip of your nose would be catching a little more light down the center of your nose, the center of your chin, the high points of your cheek. Now I'm not trying to get portraity here. I'm not trying to be too detailed. I'm just loosely going with one direction on my stroke. You can change the direction up. I kind of like to stay in one direction because some of your, your um, marker strokes show. Now, if you have, I'm using a really bright yellow. This is just a washable marker. It's gotta be a washable marker to do this. Um, I'm gonna now switch to um, a permanent marker so that before we put too much of the darker colors on, I wanna see where this face is. So I'm gonna take a permanent marker and I'm just gonna kind of go over my pencil lines here. We could do this either before or after the yellow, it doesn't really matter. But this marker has to be permanent. We don't want this one to lift. And at this point, I'm also gonna think about a hint of ear. So your ears are usually even with the bottom of your nose when your head is straight up. But in this case, this person is looking down, so the ears are gonna appear a little bit higher. So I'm gonna go a little about maybe a finger's width above just to kind of give the impression of the face looking down. I'm not gonna put the ears in, I'm just hinting ear lobes. And we're gonna just put in that lip and a hint of the bottom lip. So just a soft face. I'm not going to get into the head or anything yet. I will put eyebrows or eyelashes in. So the eyelashes just start in the center of the eye with the single with the middle eyelash. Then as you work your way out, they start to fan out to the outer edge. On the way in, they fan out and they get much smaller as they work towards your tear duct. So start in the center. Fan your way out, you start to splay out, and you go to this side, and they get much thinner as you work your way in. And that's just an easy way to remember the splaying of your lashes. Okay, now I'm going to switch to a pink. I'm going a nice bright pink here. I just happen to have these washable markers that are almost fluorescent, but you can use whatever color you want. Now, if you want a softer look to your face, you can do color harmony. So what a color harmony would be is whatever is right next to it on the color wheel. So if you decide to do green in your face, then you wanna do yellow and blue. 
If you want to do orange in your face, then you want to go yellow and red and orange. So it would have a much softer look if you wanted to go that route. On this face, I've decided to do color opposites. Color opposites is whatever's directly across from the face, or directly across from the color that you chose on your color wheel. So um, I'm just going to put this on here. Now I'm going to darken it up. I'm going to put purple. Now there's our purple. So I put this kind of orangey shade next to my yellow. There's this pinky shade next to my yellow because I want to enhance the, the warmth of the face by putting my warm colors on the face and my cool colors in the background to make the background recede and be not as important as the face. But there are some key shadow spots that we want to kind of focus in on. Now, if you want to hint a bit of a neck in here, this neck could be disappearing into the background. What I'm going to do is kind of hint with my jawline a little bit darker area. I want to have a little bit of shadow on that neck, a little bit of jaw. I'm going to put a little bit on the tip of my nose, just a bit of shadow here, a little shadow on the top lip because your top lip doesn't catch the light as much and a little bit of shadow right below the lip. And I'm just gonna dust a bit of this purple into the eye area. So it almost opens the eye up a little bit, like the person's looking down, their eyes aren't exactly closed. I'm gonna put a little bit into the eyebrow. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a wash brush. And it's important to start with your lighter colors first because you will drag color into it. So if you have watercolor pencils, you could do this with the watercolor pencils as well. Um, some of you guys have the watercolor pencil sets at home, but um, the washable markers are much more of a vibrant look to it. So you're going to get a softer look with the watercolor pencils and the watercolor. It's just whatever colors you decide, go, go nuts with that. You know, be nice and bright with your colors. This is a little bit outside of the box, this picture. Obviously, this, you know, a human doesn't have a bright yellow, bright orange, bright purple face. So I'm gonna. Um, I'm kind of using these exaggerated colors just to just to do exactly that. Make this a little more um, of an abstract piece where you're you're kind of taking realism to another level. You're just, you know, you could keep building on this with flesh tones and have these amazing underpainting. This could be considered an underpainting to a realistic picture. But we're, we're going to stop at the abstract part of it because it, it's interesting and it, it has a lot of movement to it. It allows your imagination to kind of go crazy when you're looking at it. So I'm going to just kind of put this, I'm dragging some of this purple into the face to kind of give the impression that here could be shading her face. I'm working it into the sides of her cheek, just kind of loosely. Don't try to be perfect with this. I'm just gonna keep moving this. It's a very cool look to it. It just looks like her face is emerging. I'm gonna drag a bit of this pinky purple down the sides of her nose because your nose is a hill. You don't want to put lines there though. You want to keep them soft. It's a little more realistic to have it soft. A little bit on the so we really don't want any of the white of the paper to be left behind. All right. And I like that you can still see the texture of the original sketch. You can still see the texture of the lines of the marker, which adds to this, her emerging out of something here. It gives the picture some cool movement to it. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna come back and we're gonna revisit this in a few minutes to set things forward and back. And so we're going to let it dry, have some fun, choose your colors, even experiment on scrap paper first to see what color combinations you want to go with for this. Okay. Okay, now that the painting is dry and I can feel it and it doesn't have any coolness to it, I just don't want to wreck the markers by using it on wet paper. So there's different ways that you can go with this. What I want you to do is I want you to really think about um, how you want to bring that face out and what you see in this. It could be wind, it could be nature, it could be um, just her hair. So I'm going to give you a couple different ideas. I've done another one and this one I've added blue marker and I brought out some of the pinks uh, and the yellow warm tones for the highlights and gave the impression of hair. So the other thing you could do is I just did this with marker to kind of show you. Um, 
you could make it look almost mystical or um, kind of magical and you could have some fun with that and then bring this in with colors I've just done it on a piece of uh, mylar or it's just a, a page protector really and do some experimental things with it and I just took page protector and cut it in half and then gave myself a couple of ideas so what I'm going to go with is I'm going to make her look like she's coming out of water so I'm just going to take the purple which is the deeper tone that we used in this picture and I'm going to just look at where her surface of her skin would emerge out of water so I'm adding just a ripple in here to make it look like her face is emerging out of water then I'm going to add a couple of continued ripples where the water is disturbed so I'm going to make her look like she's coming out of so do you see how this is looking she's in water and I'm making it look like she's emerging out of the water so I'm, I'm using a, a purple marker you could use the black if you wanted to but I think the purple brings more attention to her face rather than the ripples in the water so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to shade a few of these ripples to be a little larger and I'm just going to add a few. I don't want to get too busy back here. I also want to add some shadow. So I'm going to go deeper to the outer edges of the painting and leave some, some of the original purple as my mid-tone. So I'm just going to shade over to the side. And again, I'm just using the marker. You can you do this with your watercolor or your uh, watercolor pencils. do this whole thing dry too you could do this in just colored pencil if you don't have the washable markers or the watercolor pencils you could do this dry now you could introduce other colors as well you could go in with some blues and some pinks on their own just to give you changes in the color as well so I'm going to take and dampen this with a wash brush use whatever brush is comfortable but I like to use wash brush because it keeps my my lines loose it, it forces me to be loose and not too detailed so this allows me to kind of just slide those lines in there so I'm just going to kind of give the the little bit of water a glaze so some of that purple flows into it so it just gives that feeling of movement now I can go in with a little bit of white for highlighting when this is dry and you can use a gel pen for that or you could use um, a white chalk pastel or a white watercolor pencil or a regular color pencil even um, would work so you know kind of have some fun with this like try even just taking some page protectors and try a few different versions of the same picture and it, it's just kind of interesting how this now I'm gonna I'm gonna um, uh, go back and maybe add a little bit of the highlighting when it's dry but I'm gonna leave it at that for right now and I'll let you experiment and you can see the final one um, when it dries and I take a photo of it have fun with this this is a this is a, a experimental piece and a lot of fun with color